Here's my attempt at trying to use katsu. But first, this. So you know how you're on a road trip and you always see the kudzu on the side of the road and you're like, ah, oh, I wish I would just take the time and go jump around and play in that stuff. Today we did. Hey everybody, this video is about kudzu. And we are in one of the largest patches I've seen so far along the road. It is called the vine that ate the south. But don't worry, if you're worried about it, not only can you take care of it, but you can also do a lot with it, including eat it. Ugh. All right, let's get started. Kudzu and ways to use it and not use it. Now, what I knew about kudzu from over 15 years looking at this plant was that it was a killer vine that was taking over. Well, this massive vine right here, this is the vine that's taking over the south. The mile a minute vine, this is kudzu. More recently, I heard claims that we shouldn't see this as so invasive. We should see it as a food source. So my goal with this video was to find the truth, to get to the bottom of it. But let me step back with this. If you're from the north and you've never seen kudzu, let's put this in perspective. I'm in a giant kudzu forest right now. It extends as far as I can see behind me, swallowing up everything. I am like up to my chest in it. But it is like drowning, swimming in the stuff. How neat is this? It's so beautiful. And I should note that in this field, almost nothing grows under kudzu. No native plants, nothing. The kudzu has arrived. And to show just how fast this grows, I started a time lapse. This right here is the site of the time lapse. Thing. We will not be able to walk through this. You don't think so? It's the very, very beginning of spring and there's no kudzu to be found, but I know it's here because I saw it last year. So I'm gonna try to document as well as I can how quickly kudzu grows. Take a look at this shopping cart. It looks like it's been here for a year or so. Like I'm guessing that's probably last year's growth of kudzu, um, but we'll see what happens to it this year. show where the shopping cart is. Yeah, we had to dig it out, <laughs> but it's right, right it's right there. in there. Check Here's this out. <laughs> it was totally buried. Of course, this wasn't the only time lapse I did. Now from that alone, you might think, yeah, it's a terrible problem. We have to do something about it. But what I've come to realize is that there are a lot of misconceptions. The first being that it is going to take over completely the South. But the reason people think that is in part because of its complicated history. The history of kudzu begins in 1876 when it was brought to the U.S. at the Centennial Exposition in Philadelphia. This is where all sorts of different countries come together and they're like, look at this cool thing that our country has. Well, Japan came over and they brought kudzu and they wanted to show how cool it was climbing up trellises and it has beautiful flowers and it's just a nice luscious green plant. And then it started to catch on and people started to sell kudzu. In fact, the US government encouraged people to plant it to control erosion. And it would go crazy in a big field. It would vine and climb up everything. And that's where things got out of control. Now you're left with all of these fields that are abandoned, hard to get to, hard to mow. And you have what looks like kudzu everywhere. But I'm here to tell you that mostly it grows through these runners. Little nodes when they hit the ground will reroot, and you have more kudzu. It grows fairly rapidly as well, but you can easily control it if you want to. Bring in some goats, spray some herbicide time after time. It doesn't spread easily by seed, not like some of the other invasive plants. So more or less, these plants have been localized to areas where they were planted. In addition, we now have kudzu bugs, which limit their growth. Five kudzu bugs in my shoe. Oh my gosh. All of this is good news for an invasive species expert like myself. And now for what I was interested in, can you use it? The short answer, yes. 
but the internet will fool you if you try to look it up. <laughs> and because I can't just take what everybody says on the internet at face value, because they often repeat each other from wrong sources, I tried all of it myself. So here's my attempt at trying to use cutscene. Oh, gross! First, people say the leaves make great salad. Even this part right here is a little bit tough. We picked the youngest, tenderest leaves and tried to make them into a salad, cook them up, try different recipes. It's pretty stringy. We'll see what we get. It's like I'm eating grass. Not even worse than grass. Mm. No, it's kind of tastes like grass. Unfortunately, no matter what we tried, it remained extremely tough, fibrous. It just was chewy in your mouth. Not great. Conclusion, the leaves make terrible salad. People also say these little shoot tips, the growing ends, are edible. Shoot tips, they're fuzzy. See how they taste. You can totally take one of these out in the field, start munching on it. It tastes a little beanish. The only problem is that they're very furry. So as you start eating it, it's pretty fibrous. You get hair in the back of your throat. It tastes like a bean. The best thing we found was to take these bean shoot tips, pick a whole bunch, and then peel the outer hair layer off and inside. Well, that's really good, but it takes forever to get to that point. Conclusion, they're edible, but it's a little furry. We're going to see if we can eat the root now. Time to dig up kudzu. All right, right here is where the stem comes down from all of those branches right there. And there's a, there's a big tuber under there. Come up. Oh, I'm dying. Yeah, I got it. Oh my gosh, that was too much work. Trying to figure out how to uh, process this properly. You're not really gonna eat it. Yeah, that's our hope. I thought, let's cook it up like a potato. This one cooks up and... Uh, you wanna try a piece of this just for the heck of it? Yeah. This is disgusting. I mean, I could see it being an acquired taste. Like I could be like, you could like, oh, that's a, that's a good it's bitter tea. Very bitter. Bitter, right? Mm -hmm. Now I should note that Japanese arrowroot or kudzu root, as it is called, can be bought at the store. You'll get it either as a fine white powder or a fine brown powder, and you can use this as a medicine. It's traditional Japanese and Chinese medicine, and it can also be used in recipes that call for thickening, so soups or sauces. However, you cannot cook it up like a potato, as some people say on the internet. That's not really how this starch works. It's very fibrous, so you don't just slice it, dice it, throw it on the fire. I have, however, seen people shred it, and then once they've shredded it, press all of those shredded pieces and they get a juice out of it, and then they can drink that. Um, so either as the juice like that or the fine powder that you can add to ingredients, that's probably the best way to do it. But just to go out into the field and collect a root and do it yourself is very, very difficult. You might as well just buy it at the store. But the flowers present a different option. Now for the flowers. And yes, I had checked, flowers are not poisonous. So I thought, why don't I just take the entire stalk and put it in my mouth? Hopefully there's no bugs inside. <laughs> Flowers, of course, are used to attract pollinators, so sometimes they're very sweet. Orchids, for instance, pretty good flowers. Not, no, no, not this one. I will say not kudzu. Kudzu flowers, no, they're not good. Let's see if it makes good tea. Probably will not. So I grabbed some flowers and threw it in a cup. Good, right? Yeah, it smells really good. The flowers a little bit smell like grapes with a green undertone. I added hot water to the flowers. This is nice to sometimes dissolve some of the compounds inside and get it into the water. I must say it smelled very good at this point. I let it sit for just a little while. It turned orange and I tested it out. Cuts your tea just for Haley. Does that smell good? It doesn't smell good. I mean, it smells. Like a little bit dank. Tastes dank. Like, well, you know, earthy. Or it tastes earthy, yeah. Finally, can you make rope out of these long vines? Mm. Well, I'm gonna try to make some rope out of it. 
my goal was to separate the fibers out of the vines. Now, kudzu is known for having bast fiber, which means it's out of the phloem fibers. Now, I won't do a complicated science lesson here, but basically what you're going to do in the field is you're going to first take it and smash the vine. That starts to separate the fibers from the other material in the plant. Then you're going to take the long stems and you're going to start pulling them apart because you just want the thin outer fibers. Now, I know there are ways to process this to get high quality fibers, but I wanted to see if you could do it in the field. Could you actually just spin this together and make a usable rope? Look at that. <laughs> you can make rope out of these plants, but you're not gonna take the young tips. They break too easily. They have to get harder, more fibrous. So it's best to harvest them, I would say, in the winter time, or you come in and you grab some of the older vines. Then you have to get rid of the pith and you're good to go. And it makes an okay section of rope. A little bit of work, but you can do it. So the take home is that this kudzu plant, while it's invasive and can be bad at times, it's not the killer that we all learn to see it here in the South. I mean, sure, you can see it's spreading behind me, but it's also not going to spread throughout an entire forest unchecked. And there's ways to do something about it if you want to. I also learned that while everyone else on the internet seems to spread this rumor that it's a really edible food source and we should just see this as a big buffet behind us, well, that's not gonna happen anytime soon because darned if you can't make a great salad out of it. The shoot tips are okay if you process them a lot or you're okay with hair in your throat. The flowers are okay, a little bitter, but you might not wanna eat too many of them. <laughs> and the roots are really, really hard to process. All that to say, it's not poisonous. You might as well try it yourself if you think you know what to do with it. Um, if one of you has a recipe and you swear by this and you actually use it, let me know in the comment section below. Maybe I missed something. Maybe I didn't cook it up quite right. Who knows? <laughs> if you appreciated this video, you know what to do. That helps us with the algorithm. We have more stuff on plants coming up. Also, if you didn't know, Haley and I wrote a book called Mother Nature is Not Trying to Kill You. You know, myths like this, the kudzu, the killer, plant of the south we we address stuff like that or if you want to pick up that book you can go over to our patreon we have it less than you can get it on amazon and i have to give a big thanks to our patrons because they allow me to take a plant like kudzu and instead of just regurgitating what i hear on the internet i can actually try it out myself and do time lapses like this which is pretty cool also big thanks to dave coyle and the usda slash Clemson Extension Unit for helping with the other video, which you can check out up there about how to get rid of kudzu. All right, everyone, we'll see you in the next video. Oh my gosh. Hi, Steph.